Hi, welcome to the video. I'm super excited to be opening this package from Choose and Keeping, a stationery store in London. I bought some art supplies so that I could try them out. I got the idea to make this video from Pear Floor, who made a super cute unboxing video and demo of some Choose and Keeping supplies that she had. The packaging was super cute. The products were brands that I've never heard of. So of course I had to go on their website and check it out. So Choose and Keeping is a stationery store that has beautiful handmade journals, a huge variety of fountain pens, and a bunch of other stationery and art supplies. Oh. Choose and Keeping operates with the belief that stationery should be appraised for its historical and cultural significance, as well as its design and functionality. I love these stickers. They're so cute. I have to cut it. Okay. Okay, so the first thing is a botanical watercolor pad in size large and color is light green. The second one is the Aquarello watercolor pad, which is actually Italian for watercolor. Um, this is a size small. It has cream paper. They also have one available with white paper. But this one's off-white. It has 20 sheets of 300 gram acid-free Italian paper, 17 by 24 centimeters. And it's 100% cotton, which of course I love. Uh, I didn't know until I got it that it's actually made by Fabriano. I have bought Fabriano paper before. This pad comes with 15 sheets of luxury weighted pure white paper in the B5 size and the paper weight is 210 grams. Wow, they really individually wrap everything. The next thing is Japanese Sumi E watercolor set. Um, I looked it up and Sumi means black ink and E means painting. So I guess this is like a black ink themed watercolor set. It has uh, dark colors. The palette has a brown black, a purple black, a blue black, a green black, a yellow black, and a red black. So I was really attracted to kind of the dark, neutral, muted colors that were in this palette. And I'm going to actually swatch them out later in the video. Next up is the Mint Kawiko Skyline Fountain Pen. So this is actually a German fountain pen with a medium sized steel nib that takes standard small international cartridges and it actually came with a blue one in the barrel. But the barrel can also just be filled with ink, which is what I'm going to do. Next we have the Choosing Keeping Twin 1.1 millimeter mechanical pencil. I got it in black with the red and blue lead. This is a twin tipped lead holder with blue lead on one side and red on the other with a chunky 1.1 millimeter size lead.
This is the Brown Sable Calligraphy Brush in Medium, which is a fine Japanese calligraphy brush for watercolor and ink, and the bristles are made out of horse hair. I have never bought a calligraphy brush before. I guess I didn't fully understand what it was. When I did end up wetting it with water, only the very tip loosened and the rest of the hair was like glued together. I'm not sure if that's a normal thing for calligraphy brushes. Like I said, I've never bought one before, but uh, you know, it was cool. It worked. It worked well. Finally, we have the Natural Pigments Drawing Ink by Wallace and Seymour in the color Paris Brown. It's a 30 milliliter bottle. It's non-waterproof and not suitable for fountain pens which as you're gonna see, I didn't pay attention to that little note and I'm totally gonna put it in my fountain pen. And it's gonna work in the beginning, but the next day when I went to use it again, it wasn't, it wasn't working anymore. So I'm gonna have to figure that out. I did end up swatching all of the materials on both papers just to kind of test them all out and see how the papers behaved. Uh, my overall thoughts about the papers, the botanical paper was a lot smoother than I normally use for watercolor. It seems a lot like the Fabriano hot press paper, which makes sense since Fabriano makes this watercolor pad. And as far as I can tell, it's not 100% cotton, which their normal one isn't that I've bought before. And this usually makes a pretty big difference with how the paint is going to behave on the surface. And after swatching it, I knew this paper wasn't going to be my first choice for watercoloring, but I would probably reach for it for like a colored pencil piece or maybe ink. I really liked the Aquarello. It has a very subtle texture, which I really liked, and this off-white color that I thought made the colors of the watercolor look even better. And this one is 100% cotton, so the paint absorbed at a good rate. It didn't soak up too fast, and it also lifted really easily, which is also just a characteristic of Gonsai watercolor in general. I use the red side of the twin tipped pencil to trace my digital sketch. I pretty much always use a red pencil for the sketch underneath the watercolor painting because it looks a bit more natural with the skin tones and it doesn't muddy the paint like graphite might. The choosing keeping pencil was a brighter red than I was used to using, which didn't really match the kind of muted dark neutral colors of the paint, but it ended up not mattering in the end. Also, I usually use an erasable red pencil and this one didn't erase super well, but it's, it's not that big of a deal because I am just tracing a sketch that I already did.
So at first my plan was to do the whole painting with the palette I bought from Choose and Keeping, but it doesn't have a yellow or a red, so I couldn't really mix a color for the skin that looked natural. It seriously looked like a zombie. So <laughs> I got disheartened and literally just put my paintbrush down and took a two hour nap. <laughs> The next day, I went in with my Daniel Smiths and just so that I could lay down a skin tone and some blush. Uh, and then I also used the Daniel Smiths for the flowers later, but everything else was done with the Gonzai paints from Choose and Keeping. I didn't end up using the calligraphy brush because it wasn't what I was expecting and I'm so used to having my favorite brushes that work really well so I just stuck with that instead of trying to force it with the calligraphy brush but I, I do want to try using the calligraphy brush later on
After finishing the watercolor part, I went in and lined the piece with the Koiko fountain pen, which I filled with the Paris Brown ink, even though I wasn't really supposed to. It was my first time using a fountain pen and I'm seriously obsessed now. I can't wait for Inktober. I already ordered more fountain pens so that I can fill them with inks that are actually designed for fountain pens. And it just felt really easy to draw with. I'm used to doing fine liners, which have like a felt tip. And I really liked the feel of the fountain pen uh, with the nib, the metal nib. So I can't wait to do more pieces with that.
I look forward to eventually buying more stuff from Choosing Keeping. I like the company a lot. Um, even the care and the packaging, the stickers, the handwritten address, and all of that. And it's just cool products that, you know, it's not your everyday products that you're going to find on Amazon. And it's still pretty affordable, so... I was happy with the illustration I ended up making with these art supplies and I can't wait to make more art with them. That's all for today. Thanks for watching and I'll be back with another video same time next week. Goodbye!